I know what many of you guys are thinking, and it is finally, finally Trigicon has made an enclosed pistol optic. And not only have they made an enclosed pistol optic, but they're making it for not massive amounts of money. It is more pricey than some of the options out there, but I think some of that is justified by the track record that Trigicon brings to the table and some of the things that this optic features. And the fact, the most important thing of all, well, there's actually two things, uh, that it takes an RMR footprint, so you don't have to do some weird slide stuff and mounting plates. It just takes an RMR and they still put Bible verses on their optics. So let's go ahead and look at the Trigicon RCR. In the box, you will have the boxy optic, which just like any other enclosed uh, emitter optic, it is a cube. In this case, it has the form factor of a 509T. And there's a few reasons for this. One, it's a very effective form factor to still have your windage and elevation. And that is what they decided to go with. The battery is loaded from the top, very similar to the Steiner MPS, which some of you guys are used to. And then there are two very large uh, buttons on the side for brightness down, brightness up, um, they have definitely made the buttons a little bit larger and a little bit more intuitive, especially with gloves, uh, than the standard RMR and SRO. Uh, some of you all might think it looks a little jank and looks a little weird. Um, they actually work super well and I don't really mind them at all. Uh, what you may notice from the optic looking at it, the window may look a little bit smaller than some of the competition out there. Um, and it is a little bit smaller than say the Acro or just from appearances, just looking at the optic. Uh, but in reality, due to the, uh, the overall width of the optic combined with the height, it ends up being about the same um, as the Aimpoint Acro. And it's actually about the same, I'd say it's a little smaller than the 509T and it is a little bit smaller than the Steiner MPS. And a lot of this is just due to the housing that Trigicon has opted to go for to make this a very rugged optic. Uh, some people have I've seen say that the uh, battery compartment on the top is annoying because it cuts into, you know, it adds a little bit more border and width along the top of the optic. Um, in shooting this optic, that was not something that I noticed or my friend, no, uh, my friend Garrett noticed either. He's an M-Class carry optic shooter. Um, he spent a lot of time on the 509T. I've spent a good amount of time shooting the Acro, and that wasn't something that I noticed uh, shooting this optic being that thick border along the top. And having a top-loaded battery has some advantages, um, and I just really like how it's uh, easily accessible. So what else comes in the box? You have some Loctite for your screws if that's needed, a manual, awesome. But there are two things in particular that you really need to keep on you at all times or readily accessible. One is they include screws and because these are special screws and they've got some patents and stuff going on, um, you are not gonna be using screws that are supplied from different uh, companies that are milling slides. You are going to be using the special screws that Trigicon includes because that's how you're able to install this optic to a standard RMR footprint. So keep these screws handy. And they also include this handy little guide which is going to help uh, prevent you from over tightening and over torquing your optic. Uh, as far as uh, compatibility, um, this is sort of a downside, but granted it really only affects some of you guys shopping here at T-Rex Arms. Um, it is not compatible with the Zev Duty Slide. This is due to the thread pitch uh, that they are using for their screws. It's a little bit smaller than what Trigicon um, is producing, so there's no way as of right now for this optic to be compatible with a Zev Duty Slide. However, it is compatible with guns like the PSA Dagger with the Glock MOS, which is what I'll be mounting this to. Or if you have a milled slide uh, that's RMR footprint, um, you should be able to drop that on and use the provided screws and they include multiple lengths and you should be good to go. On top of that, they include longer lengths. So I could even add this to an offset mount if absolutely need be. Although I probably can't use the riser plate that is included because the screws themselves are not, the longest ones that they include are not going to be long enough uh, to work with the riser plate of our optic and probably other companies out there. But I'm sure they'll make a longer screw at some point. So let's go ahead and mount this up and kind of show you guys how that works. They include two sets of short screws. These are going to be the ones that you use them on most mounting plates and on most slides that are milled for RMRs. And they also include these ginormously long screws, um, which I don't know if they're gonna work on any pistols out there, uh, but it'll probably work for your offset mounts and also for possibly the ACOG. If you wanna run this on top of an ACOG, that would be pretty cool. Um, although it's kind of an expensive optic to be throwing on there, I'd probably do like an RMR or something like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, the optic and you're gonna take your two short screws, 
once you put Loctite on them, these already have some Loctite, you're going to drop them into the little area that they have patented. So now the screws are sticking up and it is ready to go. And then I'm going to take my Glock 47. I have the RMR plate installed and I'm going to drop that on. Screws are already in place. I'm going to take this small Allen key and I'm going to index it on one of the screws. I just need to get it started. It's going to take me the rest of my life. Someone asked if I was mechanically inclined. I'm not. Once you've gotten them more or less hand tight, just twisting them with the little Allen key, you're going to pull up the little reference card for torquing it to the appropriate spec. And it says here, once the fastener ceases rotation, which is where I'm at, use this guide to flex the hex key an additional four lines or spaces to ensure proper torque. Scan QR code for additional information. So they have the video of their own, but <laughs> we'll keep you here in T-Rex arms and we're not gonna let you, you know, scan that. So, uh, so I'm gonna index this card inside the notch right here. One, two. So the reference card should get you in the ballpark. Um, using a long Allen key, it's gonna be pretty hard to over torque these just due to this bending. Um, so you probably don't have to worry too much about getting in there and really leveraging on this little screw and uh, destroying your you know, plate or the screw itself. Um, but the card is helpful for just kind of knowing what's going on and, and knowing how much force you're putting into the screw itself. At this point, you can witness mark if you want and then we'll kind of watch that. Um, but that is the Trigicon RCR all mounted up, ready to go. Um, all I got to do now is zero it. Um, and just like any other enclosed optic, it does sit fairly high, although moving the battery compartment to the top instead of doing a slot on the side um, does keep the deck height of the optic a little bit lower. But if you want to run a backup irons, which I think is a little less necessary on an optic like this, you're just going to need to go get the appropriate irons. But based on durability and, and rugged ability of this optic, uh, I would not be prioritizing backup irons on an optic like this. I don't think it's going to be necessary for most of us. But if you are inclined to do such a thing, uh, go ahead and check out uh, some of the options out there to get your proper height so that you can uh, use those if the optic dies for some reason. Because this optic is launching at the same time as the RMR HD, some of you all may have the questions and also be a little confused and wonder if this optic has all of the same features that the RMR HD has with the forward facing sensor for uh, more accurate adjustment of your dot brightness uh, and also the giant bullseye reticle that some of you all might like that you know, I might make fun of you for using because um, it's really not that useful as, a, as training wheels possibly, but I really don't think it's that useful and most people will get rid of using it after a few weeks. Um, the answer is no, this optic does not have all the same features the RMR HD has. What that means is there might be an RCR HD in the future that has that forward facing sensor that has the interesting, you know, bullseye reticle that you can add to it. But for now, this is like the RMR SRO in that it goes up and it goes down with brightness with a single dot. And personally, I really like that. I don't need the other stuff. I just need something that's rugged, durable, enclosed, if I want an enclosed optic. And that's what this RCR is going to deliver. If you have any other questions about this optic, about its compatibility with different slides and different cut patterns that people are doing with their guns, go ahead and email us at team at trex-arms.com.